The KISS principle is an acronym for Keep It Simple Stupid. This principle states that we should not add any unnecessary complexity to our code. Instead, we should keep our code as simple as possible and focused on the task at hand. This will make our code not only easier to understand, but maintainable as well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can apply this great principle of design in actual code. Hello everybody, my name is Skutlo. Welcome to Coding 101, where I'm more than committed to making you a better developer one video at a time. If that sounds like something that interests you, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel, press the like button if you enjoyed the video, and leave your comments in the comment section. Now typically, when a developer is faced with a problem, they break it down into smaller pieces and then try to implement the solution in code. But often developers tend to make the mistake of not breaking down the problem into small enough or understandable enough pieces. This results in very complex implementation of even the most simple problems. Another side effect of this is having spaghetti code. You know spaghetti code, the type of code that you don't understand exactly what's going on. Everything seems to be all over the place and you don't seem to understand. Here are some of the steps that you can follow to apply the KISS principle into your code. The first thing that you need to do is to break down your task or break down your tasks into subtasks. So essentially, break down your problems into smaller problems and then solve them individually. Keep your methods as small as possible. If you're dealing with classes, keep your classes as small as possible. If you're dealing with components, make sure you keep your components as small as possible. This makes them easier to read and understand. Solve the problem, then code it. Do not make the mistake that many developers usually do of coding while they're solving the problem. That is not what is supposed to happen. First solve the problem and then apply the solution in your code. Take a mental break if you have to. It is very strenuous on you to have to do continuous coding without taking a mental break. Now I know there's some hardcore coders out there who just program for like 24 hours without taking a break. That is one of the things that leads to having those spaghetti code that we've been talking about previously. And last but not least, don't be afraid to throw away your code. Do not become so attached to your code that you are not able to see some of the lags or some of the disadvantages that you have in some of your code. If the code is not working, don't be afraid to throw it, to throw it away. Refactoring and recoding are fundamental aspects of programming. Now, let's see how we can apply the KISS principle actively in our JavaScript code. Let's take, for example, these two very similar functions. This is the old way of doing a function. This is called a function expression. And this over here is an arrow function. You can see that the sum a that we have over here, the arrow functions, are very simple and have a concise syntax for creating functions, which often makes them better to use than function expressions. So our functions are often used for one-line actions and callbacks. So you can see that in this aspect, the KISS principle would uh, be more fit uh, for the arrow function than the classic way of creating a function. Let's move on to the next application of the KISS principle. So you can see that over here, this is the classic or the old for loop. It enables us to iterate through this list of integers that you see over here. So how do we apply the KISS principle in this case? Instead of using the old for loop, we use the new for each loop 
which is very short and very concise and easy to understand, unlike this one that we have over here, which has a lot going on. So in this case, in order for us to apply the KISS principle on this for loop, we would have to use this loop instead. So you could see in this case over here, we have a JSON object. And what we're trying to do is that we're trying to access uh, these uh, values inside of these JSON object. And we want to assign these values to another variable. So you could see that the amount of work that we would have to do in this particular case. Now imagine if you have a JSON object that has many, many fields or many properties to it. Then that means you would have to do this repetitive assignment work, which is very tedious. So how would we ap apply the KISS principle in this type of situation? We would simply use destructuring. So instead of having all these assignments, we would just have one line that is going to spend all those assignments. So you can see that this is also very simple, shorter and more concise. How about if we have to concatenate two arrays? This would uh, be how we would do it. Now this one, it, it depends, it really doesn't matter. But there's a, actually an, another way, a much simpler way to actually do this. We could use what we call a spread operator, which is just going to take a copy of what we have in here and it's going to add it to this one that you see over here. And so this is how we would solve that problem using the spread operator. So the spread operator can be very useful in simplifying your code and making it a little bit uh, um, easier to read. So let me just show you one other practical, more practical example and uh, of using the KISS principle in your work. This is a simple to-do list application. And this is much more practical if you're coding in React but I guess if you're also coding in simple HTML, this is something that you can also like take note of. So we want to do a simple to-do list application, right? So if we want to apply our KISS principle in our to-do list application, then what we would have to do is we need to break down our project into smaller pieces that we can hand handle individually. So in this situation right here, what we can do is that we can just like break down uh, maybe the, the header aspect of our code I would say this is probably the header. And then this is the body of our code. And the body of our code includes other aspects of our application as well. You have the submit button, and then you have this input uh, tag that you see over here. You can have those ones separate as well. You can also divide them into those um, uh, individual components as well. And then over here, we have a to-do list item. Inside of the to-do list item, we actually have uh, these two buttons that you see over here. You can choose to also break down those buttons as well into smaller uh, itsy bitsy uh, pieces as well. And then overall we have this in these to-do list items or we can call it maybe a to-do list list. Um, so we have that list entirely. So that could also be a separate component of its own. So you could see that we have an application here and what we've done is that we've broken it down into smaller pieces so that we can handle those pieces individually. Now the wrong way to do this is to have all these pieces like clumped up together in a single file. That is the wrong way to do it. So this is the keep it simple uh, stupid principle and how it would apply to this application right here. And this uh, type of application this type of breaking down of things into smaller problems applies to all of your projects when it comes to web development. You need to learn how to break down problems into smaller pieces. And if you are doing something, uh, let's say for example, in this case, all we're doing is we are just getting the input and submitting it. Make sure that's, that, that that's all that you're doing in that component. You're not doing anything extra. You're not doing anything that does not involve the key function of that particular component. Anything that does that does not involve um, uh, that does not contribute uh, to the mandate of that component, then you can do in a separate file 
or in a separate application. I have a to-do list application that I did with React. I will leave it in my cards so that you can like take a look at it and I will try to explain as well how to break down these components into smaller pieces so you can like really try to check that out and learn more about the keep it simple principle. So that is essentially about it for today's tutorial. I hope that you have subscribed to my channel. I hope you've liked this video and if you have any comments make sure you leave those comments in the comment section. I'm happy to reply to your comments and I'm happy to engage with any of you. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.